the 603rd uh, Conference on Board Affairs. Um, we're all, always very glad to have uh, an enthusiastic crowd. And I think this panel is called Why the Western Won't Die. And um, for those of you who, many of you don't know, my name is Ernesto Acevedo Muñoz and I'm Associate Professor and Chair of the Film Studies Department here at the University of Colorado. You're probably wondering what on earth is an Irishman doing on a panel about American Westerns? And my defense or my um, reasoning is that the greatest Western director of all was John Ford, who reinterpreted the idea of the Western. He was, of course, Irish, for those of you who didn't know, very, very proud of his Irish heritage, um, very partisan as well. He um, was very critical of the English involvement in Ireland would have been um, not exactly a closet supporter, more um, uh, an overt supporter of political violence in Ireland against British rule in Ireland. And he brought out the story of the West, I think, in a very Irish sense. He um, had a lot of sympathy for the underdog. His portrayal of Native Americans wasn't as crude or crass as a lot of his contemporaries and peers. Um, it wasn't perfect by any means. Um, he, he you know, could be accused of um, racism and of not particularly getting it in our modern terms with regard to um, how to portray these people, but I think he was better than most. But what he had most of all, and which I think still sings to us down through the years, was a love of landscape, the way he portrayed Monument Valley, um, his love of the truest sense of how good could battle evil. Uh, he was also a great thriller maker. I mean, Stagecoach is a thriller. Um, the Searchers is, from my, to my mind, one of the greatest explorations of what it means to have an American identity. Another movie that one could classify in a certain way as, as a Western is a movie that's an East Coast movie, and that's The New World by Terence Malick. In other words, this is a movie about the Jamestown colony, and it is about it's about the 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 the, fir the first you know steps of the European on the North American continent. That's when the frontier was on the eastern seaboard, and what the what the Western is really about it's about the frontier. It's about the conquest of America. It's about the the uh, the confrontation between uh, the. Uh, basically the Anglo-Saxon and the, uh, the Aboriginal American, the Native American, the American Indian, and this, this film um, uh, shows it in a very mythic and very beautiful way in the, the New World, if you haven't seen it. He has another movie coming out now soon. Of, of Manifest Destiny <coughs> is something with a very, very strong Old Testament kind of, uh, kind of underpinning, and the, the winning of the West, therefore, has a certain kind of sacred quality that is, that is either explicit or implicit in many, many, uh, in many, many Western films. So that, that, the, that the idea that the Western won't die is that it's going to morph, it's going to change, it's going to adapt to various media delivery systems, it's going to meet the, the needs of the marketplace, it's going to subvert the genre itself. But ultimately what it's going to be about is the idea of um, American exceptionalism and American entitlement and the valorization of American violence when necessary to simply to implement and to underscore that exceptionalism and that superiority not only on the continent but anywhere in the world. And that is why it is not an accident that the notion of America as cowboy culture is something that is manifest in the rest of the world and its perception of some presidents more than others. What event in American history that defined American historic, uh, American uh, life and, and America's sense of itself was the one most frequently recorded and produced on film? Uh, anybody want to take a guess? Good guess, but not close. The gunfight at the OK Corral. The gunfight at the OK Corral has been the subject of either more movies uh, on its own uh, or a subplot of, uh, of uh, movies that have other themes. And each one of them has some element of what actually historically occurred. 
Um, and each one has a distinctive view that you can trace through the time in which it was shown. Close behind Gunfight at OK Corral, uh, somewhere in the top, top five certainly would be um, uh, Custer's Last Stand. Um, and consider the variations of the views of that event uh, as you go from they died with their boots on, um, Little Big Man, uh, to Son of the Morning Star, uh, which was a, a TV film, um, exceptionally deep.